Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today's Pick a Card reading was actually inspired by another YouTube channel creator who is not um, is in the tarot, what we might loosely call tarot tube, all, the, all things to do with sort of tarot readings, divination, sort of alternative spiritual approaches, all that kind of thing. She's in that space, but I don't know that she, maybe she does readings sometimes, but for the most part, she does a lot around new decks and how she uses them and that kind of thing. And that's the wonderful Lisa prepares. So some of you may be aware of her. If not, I highly recommend her channel if you're interested in those things and checking out new decks and, and so forth. And I was actually watching one of her videos this morning and something she said inspired this reading. So I feel like I need to talk about that and explain this reading a bit because it's slightly different in, not necessarily its structure, but in how you might choose the piles and the things to think about and to understand the reading. I think it is kind of necessary to go into a bit of detail and I would sort of like highly encourage you to listen to the intro and then choose your your deck, your, your pile or piles. I mean... By all means, do you. If you just feel drawn to something, go to it and it should become obvious as we go through the reading. But I just think it's worth giving the background. So in Lisa's video, and she does a series that she calls This or That, where she looks at different decks in her in her collection and decides whether she's going to keep both, one or neither. She was talking about two different decks, one of which was the Dreams of Gaia Tarot, which I have and which is actually going to be incorporated in this, and another one. I can't remember what it was, but it was another tarot. And they were both tarots that had slightly different structure to tarot to normal. But what she said, which is what triggered this, is that she said that she felt when she used the Dreams of Gaia Tarot that it was like exploring what what you know she wanted to sort of get to and, and develop and sort of psychology and all those sort of things. Whereas the other deck felt like having explored it, it was how she then simplified it, refined it, broke it down and, and went to the new. And what it made me think of is what I would think of as phases of life. And this is both in terms of sort of maturation phases like the 20s, 30s, 40s or 50s, but also from my background working in human resources, you know, like stages that you might be at when you're sort of new to a job and you're exploring in it, you're consolidating because you've been doing it for a while and you're getting very mastering it, you're stretching yourself for the next one, or maybe you're at a point where you are uh, mentoring others and, and paying it forward. So there are different sort of phases and you kind of move in and out of those over and over through a career. And I think the same thing happens with life. So while on a broad level, when we're in our 20s, we are kind of exploring who we are, what we want to do, spreading our wings from sort of study or whatever it might be. And then in the 30s, we're starting to kind of like move up the ladder career-wise or creatively or whatever we want to do. And then the 40s, we've kind of got a reasonable way. We know who we are. We're kind of like simplifying and refining. And then by, say, the 50s or older, we're maybe thinking about, oh, when can I retire? Or we're thinking about how do I mentor and coach others? I mean, I think there is a an overall maturation thing that, that falls roughly into those decades, but it doesn't fall exactly that way. I've known 20-year-olds who, who had the maturity and vision of what they were doing of a 40-year-old and so forth. I've known 50-year-olds who want to sort of have a second youth and start again and, and do everything new, and it's all wonderful. There's no, no criticism in, in either. So it's not completely generational. But there's something about that. There's something about the phases of life. And I thought, what an interesting topic. Because... I think that in life, we, we may be at any given stage. And so when you look at these and you're choosing, and I'll just put down the numbers, because at the end of the day, some of you might just still want to choose by the numbers and all of that kind of thing, and that's fine. But part of the logic of this is that unlike most picker cards where I'd say, well, I don't know at all what's going to happen, I do know that I'm going to be focusing primarily on the stage that each of these represent for the reading. But what I will be doing in the reading is I'll be looking at that as a major stage, like and, and it may be in your career, it may be in your creativity, it may be in your love life, it could be anything. I will also be looking at a secondary stage because you may be at sort of almost the 40 stage, regardless of whatever age you are around your career, but you might just have met the love of your life and you're exploring it. So I want to kind of look at a secondary level as well too. And with the concept that we can always move between levels and so forth and go through this sort of transition a number of times. But what I would suggest is that if you are primarily thinking about this, when you came to this reading and you, you thought, you know, I want to have a look at what phase of life, I mean, you were primarily thinking about career and, and you know, who you are in the world, then think about whatever of those sort of 
phases you think that you're in. Similarly, if it's about starting a family or whatever, whatever your primary thing is, think about that. Think about exploration, building, consolidation, paying it forward. That's almost what I would say is the kind of sense of, of these different ones because that's the sort of energy that will be permeating quite a lot of the, of the reading. And we'll look at what it looks like at the moment for you. We'll look at how that's sort of working for you. What's the secondary phase? What's Spirit's advice about, you know, synthesizing those and then we're going to have a look at how your phase where you're at impacts others how both individually people around you and then also sort of the world or your community and whatever level you're doing things and we'll also look at how it blesses you what are the blessings that come from it and how you can ultimately make your life and your development and your growth and art form for yourself so that's what we're going to cover but as I say, so it's just a little bit different. I mean, at the end of the day, if your spirit guides are telling you it doesn't really matter about what you're thinking, go for pole two, then go for pole two. There's not a problem with that. But I do think that this is just one of those sort of situations where maybe a bit of thought about what's the key thing you that brought you here in terms of the, the idea that you wanted to see where you're up to. That might tell you roughly where you think you sit and that will probably be the right, the right reading for you. And if you are thinking about more than one thing and you're thinking actually I'd be in the 20s there and I'd be in the 50s there in the sense of maturation as I'm saying not in the sense of your age then by all means you know go to more than one reading so with that more lengthy introduction in place and a thank you to Lisa Pepez for the uh, inspiration and also actually a thank you to the creator of this deck which is the Who deck this is V from V Love and Crystal so another great tarot reader and pick a card reader on YouTube she does amazing amazing uh, decks and and I will often use this and, and talk about those sort of generational stages so thanks also to her because this is going to be part of the core part of the reading as well it's really wonderful to have a deck creator who really gets the sort of things that, that we readers need so thank you to both those people and with no further ado when you know what reading or readings you want to go to the timestamps as always are in the description box below and I'll see you there Welcome, Pile 1, to your reading. So you have come to the reading that is saying the primary sort of developmental phase or maturation phase in life that you're looking at for whatever this is, is around the 20s. And as I said in the introduction, the 20s is, is a time when we explore. So as I say, you don't have to be in your 20s for this, but whatever this issue is, is sort of exploring, finding out who you are. I do think quite a few people might have come to this who are in their 20s. So I suspect potentially your later 20s with the Saturn return card there. But you don't have to be, as I say, but near the end of your 20s, between about 28 and 30, you, you come to your Saturn return. And that is normally where you first have really crystallized who you're going to be in the world. So there's definitely a sense within this that there's a span of time, basically. What you're doing, you can actually almost see the span of time that's involved in whatever this is. So if it was sort of study, and for some of you it could be with the Eight of Pentacles, that's, that's classically a card of study qualifications working out what will take you to the next level then you can see the outcome of that it's it's in your sights already you know you know what you want to do and then what you're going to go into the next phase with whatever this is so for some of you it will be literally that you are in your 20s as I say sort of probably early probably actually mid through to later 20s my guess but like something in that sort of vicinity you've got qualifications or a trade or something you've, you've worked out you've got that kind of wherewithal and skills and so forth and you've got a cause you don't want to just have a career or just or just have a relationship or whatever with the youth card and that's picking up the 20s again this youthful energy this sense of like there's something to explore we've got the skills I'm ready my kit bag ready I'm going on the journey we've also got the hero energy here which is like the knight of wands so you want to travel you want to in fact the 20s is a time when people often want to travel you know if they have the wherewithal you know to sort of explore their horizons and so forth either literally in the world or you know within you know within their own sort of souls or whatever or within their sort of knowledge and and what they can be so there's a bit of the hero quest in here there's a bit of like setting off on a journey so people who've come to here whatever has drawn you here whether it's just your life phase at the moment in in terms of age or whether it's you know a new project a new career uh, a new step having sort of developed skills you're ready to get into a journey and an adventure 
and you feel that you have the maturation. You know how to do it. You anticipate that there's going to be games and challenges with this. And also with the solar eclipse here, you anticipate that some people will literally want to compete with you. They will, they will want to be the hero rather than you and are likely to use a bit of um, gaslighting, emotional manipulation, that sort of thing with a water sign. You could be a water sign and that'll mean that you have empathy and, and that kind of understanding of the emotional elements, but there's also something very mental, very strategic about this. And with solar eclipse, there is a sense of a competition because that is where sometimes your sun is eclipsed and we have the sun here. So there's something about what you are doing in this space, which is all about who you are meant to be, your life path. So I do think it's a very fundamental thing that's brought you here. I'd be surprised if you came here just about, oh, there's a new relationship. What that? What is that about? That may come up in another another part of the reading and there's nothing sort of lesser really about a relationship, but this is about your life path and you're coming to maturation. You're coming to understanding of who you should be in the world, going from the exploration to the hero and understanding that it's not all going to be easy because there will be competitors and there will be games to be played. So I feel you're ready for that. You're kind of champing at the bit for for the the game, for the for the challenge of it all, for the journey of it all. So you're in that exploration. You're not, and the really strong things about that sort of energy is you're not sort of calcified into anything. You could t take any particular turn on the road that was necessary. You probably have a sense of what your light on the hill is because you kind of know who you want to be coming out of this, but it's not its not sort of set in place and you know that part of the, the development of you is going through the journey. So let's get a little bit of information from the tarot. So I'm using the alchemistical tarot because it also, it has a fifth suit in it, which is around spirit, because I think for some people, some of who come to these readings, the the phase they're looking at will be a spiritual thing. So we will see, you know, whether it looks like it's, could be emotional. I mean, there could be a relationship around this where there's another party that you want to go on a journey with someone and be the hero to someone, but there's somebody else who's playing games and, and is a competitor. It's possible. But for most of you, I think this is much more a career or an academic or a creative endeavor where you know that, that you're on your right path, but there are others who want that path as well. But let's look with the tarot, firstly, about what it what is this key phase really meaning to you at the moment? And then, as I say, we'll have a look at what the secondary phase might be, get an energy for where that might be and what it might be about, and then how that could be synthesized. So each phase works together. So firstly, for the current one. That's interesting. That's the eight of earth upright and then also reverse. That's, that's very interesting. Okay. So the battle and the game of what you're doing, what, what your issue is, is that you have done this, you have developed the skills and you really do know what you're doing. You know, I, I feel like if you are in that sort of 20s age group, you're sort of mature for your age and you understand the game. Otherwise, I think it's that you've been doing something, you've maybe now re-educated or refocused and now you're sort of coming into the fray, sort of almost, not necessarily at the bottom level, but sort of at the level where you need to sort of like build up again. And you definitely have that, but there are others around you with the mystic of air, that's like the queen of swords, but it's reversed. And the eight of earth reversed, which suggests those who are not necessarily as educated as you or as skilled as you, but they're trying to put a little bit of a spanner in the works. This is the game. So I think that this is, you are in a phase where you have skills beyond that age group of 20, whatever, you know, it, or what that means in terms of maturation, but you're mixing with others who are in that level, but they are actually closer to that level in terms of their knowledge and their skills. So it would be a bit like someone in a career who had really established themselves in, and I'll just make something up, established themselves in uh, accountancy, for instance, and they'd really developed that. And then they decided, you know what, I actually really want to be an organisational change because I think, you know, the understanding the budget under that is something that really needs to be known to do it right. And then they go and they learn about organisational change. They get those skills, they add it to what you already have. And then you go and you sort of start with the others who are doing that. But the others that are doing that have not got the same range of skills as you. But they do know how to play games. 
So I think that this is saying that you're you're ahead of whatever this phase is in whatever it is, you know, education, career, etc. in terms of real skill. And you, you have already kind of developed what that is and you are on your life path, but you are with other people who are not at your level yet. And you do need to be aware of the impact of that. It, you could be subject to the judgments of others and so forth. You have the possibility of leading out because this is the queen of swords reverse and this is the king of swords basically upright. You really are ahead in whatever this is. Whatever you're in, you know, as I say, and the best sort of analogy I can do is, is joining a different function in an organization. You're bringing in other things that those who are there at the level that you've come into do not have. So you are ahead, but it's sort of like, it's a balance of two things. One is be aware of judgments could be made of you and be prepared for it because you are on your right life path. And that's part of the challenge. Part of the hero's quest does not occur unless you actually have a bit of a challenge. The other thing is not to be too quick to judgment, to be fair. Because some of this might be just white noise. And what you feel is somebody sort of trying to play games might be just someone who's insecure. So I think you just need to like work out what are the people in play here. And we will be looking at how your phase, where you're up to and you're, how you're in it is impacting on others. So we might get a sort of sense about a bit more about whether this is a, a real sort of threat to your development that you need to be aware of or whether it's something that you need to sort of take a higher order view on. So let's look at the secondary phase. If we're looking at there's something in your life where you're almost going back to first principles, but not, not without already having developed something, let's see a little bit of what the energy might be around a second phase and what that might be focused on. I feel like this is like work or study or creativity. It's something where there's competition. So let's see the, the, the secondary phase that's operating in your life. Okay. It's really interesting that the idea I had was of sort of someone moving from something like accountancy to organizational change. There is something in this secondary part, secondary phase where you are dealing with major change. It may even be that what's happened is that, say for argument's sake, you, you have been through something, you had got to quite a high level, I would say, a tenor spirit, crystallization, really achieving something that was aligned to your life path. And seven of spirit reverse the sort of sense of however the frequency got out of whack with the tower. It's like you hit a point. It's almost like you hit a point that could be maybe around about the 40s idea, you know, when they talk about a midlife crisis. And again, you don't have to be in that age group. But it looks as though there was a bit of a crisis around something that you'd very well developed and you had to kind of go back to first principles. This, is, this second phase is also saying... There is something not to lose from that. There is a material thing to move into the starting again, you know, doing something, a different, a different sort of career, a different sort of creative project, whatever it is. But there is something from this and there's almost as though that phase that you were in will feed some of how you deal with this first phase. So it's, it's like you've had a shock of what can happen when you have been developed to a particular level and where everything kind of like breaks down so that you have to go back to first principles. So I feel like it is, it is like the 40s around the midlife crisis, that kind of concept. So I think something's happened. It could be around a relationship. It could be around a spiritual breakthrough. You could have got to the point of going, I've been sort of, you know, high up in the corporate world and, and doing really well, but I can't, I can't align that spiritually anymore. I've actually got to look at a different way of making money and being in the world, you know, it, I just can't sustain it and be true to myself. So spiritually, as I say, you're further along the line, but you're going back to, to the first principles on that level. So I feel like the secondary phase is actually one that came first, <laughs> that, that it, and it, there are, there is a residual thing there. There is a knowledge that you take from that. So you're not losing the spiritual development. So spiritually, I would say you're very developed. You're, you're way past whatever this is. But it gave you a, a breakthrough. It, it was a, a opportunity. And this is redirected where you put your energy and sort of like bringing you back to kind of the beginning and, and remaking yourself. So let's see what Spirit suggests to synthesize the two. Because as I say, I think for you, the secondary phase still sort of lingers and is there spiritually for you. But it was the thing that triggered the change. So let's just see what Spirit suggests around synthesizing those two phases well.
Okay. So this is actually really interesting. I think it actually gives me a, a bit more of an idea about what happened in this phase. It's saying the synthesis is about choice and taking a material choice. And that's what I think you've done in whatever this is, relationship, career, creativity. For many of you, it's taking the choice to go into something or stay in something that is, is more contested in some way, but to, to have an almost a, a observational, like kind of like stepping back from the thing. If the games are going on, stepping back from it, like watching it and so forth. And as I say, not being too quick to judge. That, that you understand you have choices. You understand that whatever happened around this, whatever this crisis was that shifted your spiritual belief, it, it made you realize that you can start again, you can go and do something different. So therefore, whatever you're going through around pushback from people who feel a bit threatened by you, that's that's fine. The other thing is with Alchemist of Fire here, so that's like the King of, of Wands reversed. In this particular deck, when it's upright, it's about prominence. So I think that you may have actually stepped back from being very well known, very senior in something, leading out in what you did to, to start something different that will ultimately you know, work out very well for you and prove that you can you can do the choice, but we'll have these games and competition because there is sort of something, there's almost fame on the line on whatever level that means. So I think that Spirit just says that detachment and that understanding. I remember like once years ago when I decided, you know, I didn't really like where I was working. I just wanted to do something different for a while and I just decided I was going to leave. And I was, I was in a fortunate situation where I had enough money in the bank that I knew that I could do that. Somebody sort of said to me, like, my goodness, you know, you're, that's so brave. She said, but then I guess once you do that and it works, you'll, you'll know you can always do it. And it was, it, it's, that's always stayed with me because it was very wise and it was very true. And it liberated me on a particular level. So I feel like there's something like that that's happened. But it was like a crisis. You know, so for a, for a very creative person who was famous, it could have literally been a crisis where something didn't work out or or you had a particular message and it wasn't seen or it was distorted in some way. So you're you're going back to first principles of doing something differently with it and maybe a little bit more behind the scenes and maybe more as a mentor to others. But it's like you can detach from some of the white noise that happens at first. So it's very interesting. So let's have a look, therefore. If we presume at the moment that you are in a situation where you've kind of gone back to sort of start something again, but you are kind of ahead of the people that you're, your supposed peers, and you're trying to balance that in some way, having learnt from what can happen when you, when you fly really high in some way. Let's have a look at how your phase is impacting others. So firstly, firstly, I'm going to pull a Rose Oracle, Oracle of the Roses card for you, your, the role that you seem to be taking on, and then also for what you're meeting back from others in, in response to that. So this is like archetypal energy. So for you, the mother, okay. Okay, well, that's interesting. And for what energy you're meeting from others in the way that you're impacting, the giver. So ultimately, I think it's going to work out well, though I do think there's a bit of a rocky road to start with. The mother is interesting. This could be that you have got very high into you know, a career or creativity and now you're sort of starting a family. That's a way that this could be. And it's you're not literally going back to your 20s in terms of age, but it's like new stuff. But you're bringing a whole range of skills to this that that you know, somebody who maybe did it at a younger age, for instance, wouldn't have, wouldn't have brought. So there's possibly that. Or, and that could be a different form of creativity. If it's not literally being a parent, then I think that ultimately, once you've got past these people playing games and feeling like, you know, who is this person who's turned up, who, who's got all this life experience in whatever form it is, you may become a nurturer for these people. And when that happens, they start to give back. So I don't, I feel like this is saying that any conflict you can observe and deal with, but it may take a different role where you are more nurturing Others, the interesting thing is I suspect that most of you in, a, in their life phase, it might have even been closer to the 50s or older because the 50s or older in a phase is like coaching and mentoring. It's just that I feel that for you, you have, have shifted environments or something so that you're almost in with a new team that you are ahead of in some ways. But as I say, um, but you've, you've yet to prove that. 
but I think you will. I think you're going to take on this natural nurturing role. Let's see a little bit about some of the sort of personality energy you're going to have coming towards you from others as a result of this. Sight. And size. Okay. Some people are going to get it. Some people, and these are the ones who will probably become givers and they will see the sort of energy of what you're bringing in and that you had, they're the sort of ones you could sit down and you could say, you know what, I had a spiritual crisis. I was, you know, I was sort of like, I had the, the you know, the big house and the big car or whatever it would be. And I, I just wasn't feeling like I was being true to myself. And, you know, it could be moving from, you know, a big corporate job to a not-for-profit, for instance. That kind of, this is, I'm just trying to look at the kind of energies that are like this. And some people will get it. Some people will see the vision. Some people will see you as, as having a kind of insight to things that's very good. Others are going to compete with you because it's all about magnitude. It's about size. Who's, yeah, and they probably won't even understand it. If you, someone who's walked away from what might have been seen to be the established powers of the world, they might think, well, you know, don't you want the big car anymore or the big house? It's that, I mean, it doesn't literally have to be that for this to be working. It could be in some other way. But I do think some are going to get it and be with you. Others are going to be more around competing with you. So I think some will, will empathise with the water sign and some will play games. And that's to be expected, I guess. Let's see another couple of qualities that you might see coming towards you as a result of you being in this phase and the people that you're around. Rabbit and pig. Okay, so we've got two, two Chinese astrology. So you could literally know some people, come across some people in this new environment or in whatever this new thing is that you're sort of building that come from those sort of age groups like those sort of birth years and so forth otherwise the sort of personality characteristics when we're talking about the pig we're talking about caring generous smart outgoing people so i think they're the ones that sort of see and connect with what you do when we're talking about rabbits they're also kind and sensitive you know they're a bit romantic but they can also be judgmental judgmental and timid so i do think what we're getting here what it's really saying is that most of this games energy and the pushback is, is more going to be people feeling insecure around you rather than meaning harm. So once you know that and you can take on this sort of like supportive role, I think you can shift through most of it, even those that kind of still don't understand the, you know, the issues about competition in relation to you. I think for the most part, you're going to find after a little bit of game playing and a little bit of sort of sorting you out and checking you out that, that whatever this is that you're in, people will see you as being of high value. So let's have a look at one step removed. I also had two other cards that were intuitively chosen before we started the reading for this. And they're meant to show the impact of your phase and where you're at on a broader community, you know, on, on the world or the community or on an organisation, whatever level that you're working at or working in or or mixing in, etc. So we have sharing. So there you go, sharing and resistance. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty consistent message. I do think the resistance will will ease off, but there. The, I just think you're in a transition where where you are actually ahead of the people that he appears. I mean, that's that's ultimately what it is. Even if you haven't necessarily stepped back in some way, you've just stepped sideways. You are ahead of your peers because you are kind of at their level with with where you are now, but you also have something else. And you, you, and some of you may be very successful and you've just, as I said, made this sidestep and so forth. So there is going to be some resistance coming towards you about what you do. But I think that you've had some sort of spiritual crisis or awareness or wake up call. And so you've got a bit of a mission. That's the hero quest that we saw at the beginning. And that always re has some resistance, but you'll also be able to share a lot. And I think your naturally generous nature and your sharing nature is going to be the thing that does it. It's going to be the thing that makes a difference. And you'll win far more people over to you uh, than, than you will have resistors at the end. So that's very positive. So what does it bring to you? So we want to actually look at the, the kind of way that this helps you. So we want to look at some blessings. So we're using blessings of the Fae. And then we'll also look at the pathway going forward for you before we close out with, with how you make an art of this particular phase. So firstly, a couple of blessings from the Fae that come for you for taking this step into this particular phase of your life. And also, I think, combining it with what you learned from the other phase that inspired it. So we have a blessing of the Sealy and a 
blessing of the trooping fae. So these are two very good blessings, I would say, for exactly the energy we saw right at the beginning. Because the blessing of the Sealy is almost a blessing of welcome. That the doors open, that you are respected and you are on it. So ultimately, as I say, even if there is some resistance to start with when you move into this phase and you start this thing and, and you feel a bit like, you know, have I done the right thing? And there might be that kind of energy at first. It is going to work and you are going to be respected. The blessing of the, the trooping or grouping, trooping fay, I think it is, is really about, you know, being able to go on the pathway, being able to be on the journey and that you will be, light will be shone to help you with the pathway. And I almost think it's this side of the blessing that created whatever the crisis was that made you sort of go back to first principles in whatever way this works. And you will find yourself accepted because it is part of recalibrating you back. See, the solar eclipse may in fact have been whatever that tower moment was. You might have had, had a wonderful creative idea that somebody stole. You might have been meant for a promotion and it didn't come. You've got to kind of like, there's something maybe about that as well. But this is to bring you back onto your pathway. And I think to help others on the pathway as well. So speaking of the pathway, let's get a card from the golden path for you as well. Abundance from within. Yeah, I think for many who've come to this, if you've come to the right reading, you've probably been doing very well in your life in some way, or you've been born into money, or or you've had some form of abundance, even if it isn't sort of like, you know, lots of money in the bank or whatever. But you've had this crisis, you've worked out that's not really what it's about. This is to give you abundance from within. And when you are respected and you are shown the pathway, even if there are games and resistance, you're on your hero quest, that gives you abundance from within. This is what this is meant to do. It may feel like a step backwards or a sideways step, but it really is a step forward for you. Okay, so to finish off, I'm going to use the Art Oracle. So this is sort of one of that sort of group of decks that I have that have famous people from different aspects of and different industries. And this is from the art world. And I wanted to choose it as a kind of how you make an art of this phase that you're in. And it's not so much about who the person is, because to be honest, I'm not terribly knowledgeable about people in the art world. But it's more to look at what the advice is that they give. And again, like I always say with these sort of oracles, sometimes it's more humorous than deep. But let's have a see what you get, pile one. And we have, oh, Marina Abramovic. Now, I do know who she is. So she does very spiritual occult type of stuff. Certainly, if you're into, into sort of occult practices and so forth, she'd be potentially right up your alley, depending upon what your occult practices were. Very, very well-known for, for sort of performance art, transformation, and so forth. And, and does, from what I understand, she's often a mentor and a muse for younger people and younger artists. So it very much fits with this sort of energy. She says, skeptic, heal thyself. So believe in yourself. There may be something about this phase of returning to first principles that helps you re-believe in yourself or an idea or a creative purpose or a spiritual approach. She says, discipline is both a noun and a verb. That's interesting. It may take some discipline to step back and to and to hold your tongue when people are pushing back and to observe and to let things move forward and to become respected for who you are and what you bring to it rather than sort of, you know, trying to just take over. So you do need to sort of be a disciplined person and also to practice discipline. And she says, when a stranger stares into your soul, do not press charges, stare back. Yeah, so when someone's playing mind games, just stare back, you know, just, just be true to who you are. And they will either then meet you or they will have to fall away because you're being true to who you are. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile One. I think you're at a very exciting phase and I think it's come, but you're coming with more than just, just sort of like the first qualifications and the first job or whatever. You're coming with more and you will be recognized and do very well with it. But it is, it's come off some sort of a crisis. So there's always a bit of a healing phase from that. But I hope that you enjoyed the reading. I hope that it resonated for you. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you have been drawn to the reading where the 30s is a sort of indicative sort of generation for the phase. And as I said in the introduction, you don't have to be in your 30s at all. But when I think about the 30s, I think about people who have 
consolidated their first sort of like exploration of who they want to be in the world creatively, in their career, in relationships and so forth. And they're now looking at how to to build that. So around relationships, it could be, you know, looking for more secure or committed relationships than when young. When in a career, it could be I've explored different sort of avenues. Now I want to sort of start being on the leadership path for creativity. It could be I'm ready to start to take something out in the world. And there's definitely a sense with all of you, regardless of whether or not you're in your 30s, you're in a phase where you are ready to take things out into the world. What I'm getting here very strongly is that for many of you, you're highly spiritual, highly psychic. And, and a lot of who you have been constructing an understanding of yourself in the sort of 20s phase, so to speak, as you move into the 30s, has been around that, about calibrating your emotional nature and your spiritual nature. I feel like many of you have gone very, very far with this. Like you're very developed. You're, you're higher than like the 30s phase around spirituality and, and self-knowledge. Like you're very precocious in that if you're in that age group. But it, otherwise, if you're, you're almost moving back to that age group uh, to, you know, if you're older, say, to, to now say, but like, I kind of spent so much time doing that, that I'm almost ready to rebirth myself. I want to now have a bit of fun. I just feel like you've, you've followed a particular path, a particular discipline. You've really balanced it very strongly in terms of your energy, your chakras, all that kind of thing. You understand that there's a cycle of these things and you're, you're quite happy if you sort of had got to the, the sort of 40s or 50s sort of phase to come back to the 30s. If you're in the 20s, you're, you're fast tracking it because there's so much energy coming through you. So psychically mature, bringing in stuff from another house. But, but I feel like you feel old before your time with Saturn. I feel like you feel like you've done so much work uh, that you haven't really explored you. You've explored emotional matters. You've explored spiritual. You've got incredibly knowledgeable about all that sort of thing. You, you, and you've probably taken some of this out into the world in terms of what you say and speak and so forth. But you want to go out in the world. Like, you, like it's interesting. There's a part of the energy of the second, second of the, the, the 20s here. Uh, but it's it's like you spent a lot of the 20s sort of phase uh, really fast tracking your spiritual and sort of creative and an understanding of the world type of development. Like I, I think many of the people who've come to this, you would be incredibly smart about psychology and you know, depth psychology and archetypes and how that connects to spiritual matters. As I say, you really developed and you've probably brought in a lot from another life, but you don't, you haven't had a lot of fun part two. So it's interesting. It's almost like it's time for a gap year. And it doesn't mean you like you've had a miserable life. I'm not trying to say that. You know, I'm sure that you've had enjoyment, you've had relationships, all those sort of things, no matter where you're at. But that part of this going back to the 30s phase, whatever this is in, whether it's your career, creativity, relationships, there is a part of you that wants to consolidate something, but you want to actually explore it a bit first. So it really does have a, a tinge of the, the 20s in it as well. So it will be interesting to see when we're looking at the, the tarot, whether or not that looks like that's the other dominant phase. Because what I feel is it might be that you are, that the people who've come here have, as I say, developed, been very precocious, developed, you're, you're ready to expand and move forward and, and you will move forward fast because that's just what you do and, and because you're kind of ahead of your time. As I say, you're old before your time in a way. But I think that there's maybe a relationship or an opportunity that opens up a different pathway. And you're almost considering, do I go back to even the 20s? Do I go back to starting again on something and having fun? Like, you know, did I, did I get just too serious, too young for some reason? That's, that's the sort of feeling around it. So let's have a look because you are consolidating. You definitely are. You're bringing a lot in, but there's itchy feet in this. So if it was the 30s, it's early 30s. Do you know what I mean? It's like just after the Saturn return, you kind of, you have kind of consolidated. There are lots of opportunities, but it it has the feeling of someone who could, you know, suddenly be offered, you know, the, the next job on the leadership track and go, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to take a couple of years off and go on a sabbatical and explore something else. Someone who's been academic and a sabbatical is a very good example of that. It's something like that. It's bringing things into balance. So let's use the tarot. I'm going to use the alchemistical tarot because it has a fifth suit, which is spirit, because I feel like sometimes these phases are very spiritually aligned. And for you, they definitely would be. So it'll be interesting to see if the spirit uh, suit comes up strongly. But I want to ask first a bit more about this phase that you're in. Then we're going to look at a secondary phase, which, as I say, I wouldn't be surprised if it's kind of like 
the twenties, like going back to, to something new and having a bit more fun. But we'll just see. I don't want to preempt it. So let's see a little bit more information firstly about the phase that you're in right now. Okay, so it's interesting for a start on either end, this is the precocious person. So some, I mean, some of you may be in a much older age group, but if that's the case, you, you still develop really fast. And whatever you're sort of like, you know, consolidating now, you know, it's like you still, there's still a thing of like, did you have fun? <laughs> did you kind of like take a bit of a break? But you're definitely sort of well advanced because we've got sort of two of effectively the kings, the alchemists in this deck are the kings. So, but one is the king of water reverse. So that is it suggesting is it is it all work and no play? You know, like are you having fun? Are you enjoying yourself? Or have you kind of gone on some sort of spiritual quest where you feel like you have to heal the world and you're not actually looking at what would have made you fill your cup, so to speak, with the cup sort of reverse. It's interesting in this deck it calls the alchemist of water embodiment. So it's the embodiment of that emotional energy. So there's something here where your cup has not been full. You're you're well poised to move forward. But like with the moon, there's an emotional call. And it is spiritual, but it's also about the new. And over here we have the alchemist of fire. So incredibly well developed, you know, with that fire energy, the, you know, the chakras aligned, you know, the downloads. You, I think on a spiritual level you get a lot of creative downloads particularly like with the Ace of Spirit reversed here. So it's literally about a download, but it's reversed. So I think it's almost like you're trying to say, stop, stop, you know, because you are very receptive. It's coming in. But I think there's just almost been an epiphany that said, I don't want to calcify yet. I want my 30s to still have some of that 20s exploration, regardless of whether you're in your 30s or not. Yeah, that because you don't want to commit to anything yet. Because it's, it's like something, I, I mean, I think for many of you, it might be something like a relationship or an offer or something that's sort of a bit out of left field that's made you think, you know what, I'm not so sure anymore. Maybe I want to see what other avenues there are before I get to the 40s phase where I'm kind of really consolidated. I want to still have some flexibility. So let's have a look. And some of you might literally want to shift a spiritual approach or something. It's like you've got to a very high level with it and you go, you know what? I want to explore something else. No, I don't want to go off and be a master of Reiki because I want to go and learn something else. It's, it's that sort of feeling. Let's have a look at what the secondary phase is that's operating in your life. Yeah. I think with the seeker of air, so seeker is page, that really does make me, it confirms what I'm feeling that there's sort of something where you've been on this fast track in whatever it is, and you are doing really well, spiritually, career-wise, creatively, whatever it is, but you, there's something where you've gone, you know what, I actually want to go back to the younger phase a bit. I want to, I want to have an exploration in some way. I, I feel like I'm, I can't integrate everything emotionally because I haven't explored enough. And, and it's got to do with a relationship, I think, for most of you. Could be a work relationship, creative relationship. Doesn't, lovers doesn't have to be romantic. But I think for many of you, something around a relationship is making you rethink your focus and, and also rethink even what you're doing around your spiritual thing because this is like the night of spirit sort of reverse. So it's, it's like shifting the focus. You know, it's like, it, and, and with the understanding, I mean, this is about understanding spiritually when it's reversed. It's like, I think you've had this aha moment that that what you thought was, as I say, precocity and, and really, really developing fast, you've kind of missed something and you kind of understood that there's been an aha moment. So I think the secondary phase is the call to the exploration of the 20s, while at the same time, you don't completely lose what you are grounding in the 30s sort of phase. So let's see how spirit would suggest you synthesize these two phases. Okay. So with Alchemist of Earth, that's like King of Pentacles, the Hanged Man, and then Hermit. I think that Spirit is saying you don't synthesize it by walking away from the spiritual. 
there is an inward looking dynamic here to the spirit and to understanding that so it's not you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak but there is a sacrifice of something material so it could literally be that you go it is it could literally be something like oh well you know i could if i stay here and stay put and i don't change anything and i still work you know 50 hour weeks then in a year's time i'm going to have a promotion or i could go you know what i'm going to take some time off or i'm going to go part-time or i'm going to go and travel and have a holiday and yes it might slow that down a bit but i really need to find out who who i really want to be and make sure that i'm not committing to something i don't want so there's a there's a material impact that you may need to sacrifice or think differently about and it is a spiritual question for you but you've got to understand the call of your spirit is not just about the saturnian you know, doing the right thing and, and following all the practices and then manifesting in the world and I'm only spiritual if I'm manifesting in the world and I'm making lots of money or whatever it might be, that there is also like the soul having nourishment, you know, understanding about whether you've actually not nourished your soul when you've been sort of pursuing sort of like development and, and enlightenment, you know. Enlightenment should also have an element of fun to it. So so I think there that you're saying you're going to need to sort of maybe slow down some of the material manifestation a bit to allow yourself that capacity to integrate these and then then you can move forward then you can go okay you know i know what i'm doing that's all good so let's start to have a look at the impact of this phase so we're going to start firstly with how it impacts the sort of people around you so i'm starting with the the oracle of the roses for your energy your your kind of archetypal energy and, and, you know, in this phase, and then also the archetypal energy you're meeting as a result of this phase. And I think for some of you, this is going to be about a key relationship, but take from it what resonates for you. So for you, the advocate, okay, and for the energy that you're meeting archetypally in this phase, the lover, yeah, I do think many of you, this is like a relationship's come along. It's like literally like someone's come along and said, I think it's wonderful everything you're doing, but could you just take a holiday so that we can, you know, explore each other? <laughs> There's that kind of energy around it, definitely. And and you're used to sort of being in this very serious advocacy, power of the world type of position. And that is part of this phase. But, you know, maybe you have to advocate for yourself as well about having a bit of fun. Let's have a look at some personality aspects, possibly with this lover energy, I think. veneration and suavity okay it's a nice person <laughs> they're very attractive they really look up to you too and and you can see maybe a similar sort of veneration similar spiritual sort of pathway similar devotion to all of those sort of things so it's not sort of someone or something whether it's a lover literally or whether it's a, a good a business partner or a good friend or whatever it's not someone who will take you away from your spiritual pathway but i just think they get you to lighten up a bit. They get you to suavity. It's sort of like, you know, you can have a bit of style around all of this. It doesn't all have to be serious. I think there's that kind of thing around them. You might at first wonder with suavity, like, is is are they as devoted as I am to this? You know, do they care or are they kind of like a, a you know, a, a tempter sort of whispering in my ear to take me off course? But the reality is that they are actually. It's, it's just that they do it differently. They have a little bit of fun along the way. So let's have a look at another couple of aspects around this as well spots and gold okay so when i see spots I often think leopard doesn't change its spots so this person like they have worked out who they are like you have worked out who you are and i think if anything they're a little bit more they've balanced it out a little bit more you know, but but equally, it could be that it's always going to be a bit of a balance with this person. You might be saying, it's lovely, I want to go on a holiday a couple of times a year and let's really have fun. But the rest of the time, I'm devoted to what I'm doing. And they might be going, oh, well, you know, we should have a bit more fun with that. So there could be something like that going on. The other thing is it could be very, very much, you know, like sort of physical looks. They might have freckles, birthmarks, that kind of thing. But they're consistent, you know, they're, they're consistent with what they do and they're, and they're, they're loyal. They're also likely to really like the good things in life. And they could be well off, but they, they like that kind of sense of luxury and enjoyment. You might have been a bit ascetic, actually, a little bit kind of, you know, spiritual things is about not being about abundance, even though I think that you've actually, 
you can actually manifest and so can they I think and they may in fact this might be the thing it might be someone who comes along who seems to be able to spontaneously manifest the same way as you without being quite as serious about the practice so it's just meant to shake you up a bit I think and the 30s is a good time the thir or the 30s type of phase is a good phase to be shaken up a bit you don't have to <clears throat> have fully developed it's a time when you there's still a bit more exploration it's just from a slightly higher base so let's have a look at how with a couple of other cards that were under the the card that brought you to the reading cards to represent how your phase how you interact with the community and the broader well like the, the people around you an organization community the world whatever it is that you're doing how your phase where you're at at the moment and this sort of balancing of of seriousness with a little bit of fun is going to impact sort of outside of you so we get perspective and hierarchy okay so you might find i do think there's this person who's going to trigger this in you but you may find that some people push back a bit those who who want you to be on the fast track those who think there are rules and so forth but but you're kind of bringing a perspective to that for yourself and also to maybe the situation that you're in so a spiritual perspective and a and a creative perspective to something that was maybe quite fixed so it, it could be that, you know, in an organization, for instance, you know, someone saying to you, I want you to, to you know, move into this role and you go, well, I, I just can't afford all that time now because I, I want to be able to have, you know, go on a holiday a couple of times a year and I want to explore some other things. I'm not ready for that yet. So there may be a little bit of a, a pushback from the powers that be, but there's also perspective. I think that also helps you realize, you know, is that, is that all the glittering prizes or, or do you need to sacrifice some of that to get the perspective that you need in your life? So that's good because what that means, Paul, too, is that, you know, you, there's lots of opportunities for you. You are respected and recognized. It's just make sure that you enjoy your life a bit as well, too. So let's have a look at the blessings that can come to you from being in this phase. So firstly, a couple of blessings from the phase to look, you know, to give us a sense about that energy for you. A blessing of the green. and a blessing from a fairy determined to help you so i laugh a bit because i feel like this is this person like a lover or a great friend whatever that is i think they they want to help you like they they really admire you i would say they want to help you they want you to actually have some fun in life and i just think it, it really i think spirit is saying you know pay attention to that a blessing of the green is also getting back to your authentic nature getting back to nature even if you can't go you know flying off all around the world maybe you know go on some nature hikes with this person that kind of thing there's a blessing to get back to what you truly are and to ground you in many ways and to give you new life and new energy and all the things that you would want in the 30s to really expand but you do have to listen to someone else because there's someone who's trying to help you and their, their energy is very positive for you. Let's have a look at what path you could go on as a result of this. Jade Mountain. So it's interesting, green, jade, this is all about the, the mountain to the heart. This is all about the sort of like the beautiful and the refined. But again, it's a journey. Like I do think there's something about journey. And if it isn't literal, if it isn't like taking a holiday and, and traveling, then it's about traveling within and to the heart and that kind of thing. So so that's that's part of what this 30s is about. Is I just think it's spirit saying, you know, you're so dedicated and you're so talented and you're so spiritual but like you've forgotten you and all of this. And I think someone's going to be around if they aren't already around in your life to remind you, or you may already be experiencing that. And yet you may, like, as I say, you might be older than thirties or whatever, and you're almost being pushed back into that sort of thing of sort of like rechecking what you've done. Cause some of you may very well be older than that and have really established yourself. And it's like, suddenly something comes along like a breath of breath of fresh air. So to finish off, what I want to do is use a card from the art oracle. So there's there's many different oracle decks like this that I have, you know, like music and fashion and love oracles. They're all with people from history in a particular industry. So in this case, it's art. Now, I'm not a big art knowledge person, so it's I'm not really looking so much for who the person is. I mean, I may recognize some of them, but I'm looking more for what their advice to you is because it's a question of how to make an art of your life when you are in this phase. And even I know who Michelangelo was. 
as I say, I'm not a, I'm not an art art sort of student, but you know, very that's interesting. Very very developed, very very precocious, very very spiritual. All of those things. I have no idea whether he struggled with having a good time because he he was in the service of very very powerful people. But what he has to say, and this may be just humorous or it may be something to take, he says, no compromise is a good compromise. So if you are giving up what is fun as a compromise, that's not a good compromise. You know, if somebody is saying that's fine, just, just take this job now and do it in a couple of years' time, that's probably not a good compromise. You need to work out what works for you. He says, blemished origins do not negate flawless conclusions. So I think that's really just, it doesn't matter if, if you, this has been an aha moment and you think, oh, did I do this wrong? Because you actually didn't do it wrong and there are opportunities to, to refine and, and so forth, which is part of what the 30s phase is about. And he finally says, become ill with unf unhealthy perfectionism. I think that's, I think it's almost the opposite, don't. I think that you are a bit of a perfectionist. I think you are upwardly mobile. I think you are all of those things. But don't make it make you ill. You know, don't make it make you miss out on the heart. Go to the moon, not just the spirituality. You know, work out, you know, have the fun. I think that's the main thing. This 30s phase for you will be a consolidation and a building phase, but don't lose that youthful sense of there's a reason for doing all of this, which is also about enjoying life. So I hope that that resonates for you, Paul, too. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments about how it connected, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Paul, three, to your reading. So here's the 40s card. That was what probably drew you to this reading. In any case, this sort of energy is very typical of the sort of 40s era. And as I say, you don't have to be in your 40s for this. It's just an era of really consolidating and committing to things and then working out what the longer term longer term prospects or impacts of things are so that you can then work out almost your second phase of life that starts to kick in in the 50s, an older sort of framework. For the people coming to this reading, I, feel, I mean, like sometimes the 40s is your classic midlife crisis era. So some of you, there could be something like that, but I don't see a lot of that energy here. I see more a kind of a uh, all the pieces of your life are coming together. This is why it's sort of in this phase, regardless of whatever age you are. It looks like love, relationships, what you would want to do about family, all of those things are coming together. It looks like you're really focusing on what it is to lead an enjoyable and healthy life. Like how does that work-life balance is becoming important to you. If you spend a lot of time in the sort of 20s, 30s sort of frame, in those phases, sort of working very hard, you know, being a bit of a workaholic, you're kind of pulling back a little bit on that. You're, you've, you've got far enough to do that. You're focusing more on the relationships in your life, you know, love, children, whatever it might be, and on and on that sort of longer-term investment. You've, you've done the hard yards. You're now actually starting to reap the benefits of what you're doing, and you are manifesting what you want to manifest, and you've worked out what your values are and who you are. And, and how to act in the world with masculine energy. You don't have to be you know, masculine. You don't have to identify with divine masculine or masculine sort of gender or anything like that. You may be, but you don't have to. This is more like action. You've taken the actions and it looks to me like you're putting an enormous amount of thought into what comes next and, and how do you get that? How do you get work-life balance? How do you get health, longer-term outcomes, your values align to what you're doing. So it feels like someone who in some phase of their life, whatever it is that you are doing, you know, to be in this sort of 40s phase, has achieved quite a lot. And you now can start to reap the rewards and, and recalibrate. And with the waxing crescent moon, that is about setting new intentions and new seeds. So it's like, you know, it's a new dietary program. It's a new exercise program. It's new love or, or a better balance to spend time with your family. It's aligning now what you do and what your career trajectory is or how you are in the world with what your values are and setting some new things. So it's almost to me like you are the sort of person who will, in as I said, regardless of whatever age you're at, in, in this sort of thing in terms of living the right life, living the good life, having having the material and health and emotional balance you know, that you've, you've really thought through, you're then probably going to want to do something new. I feel like you won't move into the 50s thing. You're not going to be ready to kind of go into that, how do I mentor, coach, semi-retire, retire, that kind of energy. I think you're more likely to then revert to something new. So it'll be interesting to see what the secondary phase is around you. But I feel that most of you are 
bringing your life into balance, having achieved a lot of things, you're quite self-actualized. You, you sort of know who you are and you know what you want to do and how you want to act in the world. And it's, it's, and you may, with some of this, have felt that you strayed from what some of your values were to sort of get on. You may have felt you didn't put enough energy into love, for instance. You may have felt you sort of burnt the candle at both ends working and you really have to get your body back into shape. There could be any of those things, but you're thinking it through. And it's, it, this sort of card always makes me think, even though it's thought, it looks like she's putting things into an alchemist pot. So it's, it's bringing that balance. I think that's where you are. In your life, you're bringing balance in at the moment and consolidating that. So that, and, and it could be in anything in your life or it could be across all elements of your life. So let's use the tarot. So we're going to ask a little bit more about this phase that you're in. And then we're going to ask about the secondary phase, like what would be the kind of next step or the sort of shadow phase that's sort of there as well in another aspect of your life that you're maybe not as focused on and then how to synthesize it. So firstly, let's get a little bit more idea about this sort of sense of sifting through and sorting out and working out how to bring everything into balance in your life so that you're ready for whatever your next step is. And I'm using the alchemistical tarot because it has a fifth suit, which is about spirit, because I wanted to sort of pick up if where these phases might be very spiritual. So, and then we've got a spirit card already. So traveler of spirit, which is like the knight of spirit. We've got the mystic of spirit, which is like the queen of spirit. Five of fire. Okay, the tower reversed. And sun reverse. Okay, so I don't think, I mean, I actually think you're in a good place. So I don't see these cards being reversed as a problem, but I think they're tell, telling us about why it is that you're recalibrating your life, why it is that you are looking at those aspects. There is there is definitely a spiritual call here. With If these were both upright, it would be sort of like a spiritual understanding and a kind of retention and, and consolidation of a spiritual path. This suggests to me that that you feel like maybe you have been so focused on the action and on the material, you actually put the spiritual to the side. So you know there's something about connecting all of this to a spiritual purpose and so forth. And maybe opening up those, it could be in around the healing and so forth, looking at spiritual modalities rather than conventional. But there's a sort of sense at the moment where, and this is the alchemy thing, that you want to, to bring a holistic spiritual approach to what it is that you're doing. You've probably been in a very, very conflict-based or very competitive environment, but you're coming out of that or coming out of caring about it with the five of fire, so five of wands reversed, maybe because there was major change. For some of you, this may be that you've, you've been in a job and you got to a very high level and then the organisation changed and, and you, know, you found yourself leaving the job or that you're being surrounded by restructuring and it's giving other options. You could be having an option to, to do part-time work or something and get your life back into balance or, or even things that have happened, depending on when you see this, this reading, it's being done still in, you know, that when it's being filmed, it's being done in the wake of the pandemic and all that. And a lot of people have gone through change about their life and how much they want to work in the office and how much they want to work at home coming off that so there could be something like that that is doing it you it hasn't been major it hasn't completely sort of uprooted your life but there is a sense that you are using this as an impetus to get things back into balance because you feel a little bit with the sun reverse like you kind of lost sight of who you really wanted to be in your life path in this sort of i say competitive sort of environment so i think it's just it's just a recalibration of, of who you want to be in the world regardless of what age you are and there's a maturity to your approach. There's an understanding of what were your choices and what was sort of part of what was happening outside of you. So let's have a look at the secondary phase that could be influencing this one that you're sort of in. Or that some in some of these readings, it's, it's been kind of what preempted the phase that, that people are in. So we'll say, so spirit again, air, earth. And spirit again yeah your secondary phase i think is is spiritual and i think that it is it is a, i think you've recognized that you didn't focus on that so it's almost like you're in the sort of 40s phase around your career and you're trying to balance that and take some opportunities and choices and so forth so that's that's one thing but i think that, that you this has been triggered by a kind of a spiritual crisis and 
you are in that phase as well. And in that phase, you are really starting to explore and look at what you're doing. So it feels more like the 20s or 30s sort of phase around spirituality. And, and you're kind of withdrawing within yourself for that. It's part of what is actually forcing you to think about all the balance of your life because you're having to find space and time for that. You're, you're rejecting just the, the sort of material with the, the mystic of earth. So that's like the, the queen of earth. You, you won't commit to as much in this sort of material world as you did because you're starting new, a new thing, a kind of, as I say, 20s or 30s type phase around spirituality. And it's not that you haven't had a spiritual thing, but it's like I think you hit a point where it didn't align anymore with the Ten of Spirit crystallization. If it was the right way up, you would have really started to bring that into the material world. But something's made you think, you know what, it lagged a bit behind. So I think it's partly the healing thing that you're doing, but I think more generally there's something about recalibrating your spiritual approach. So let's ask for Spirit's advice about how to, to balance these two phases. Okay, so this is all about accepting, I think, that there's a time where you won't have all the answers about the spiritual and just to allow that to develop. You're, you're kind, you need to kind of understand that in, in the other aspects of your life where you're kind of operating in the 40s phase, you are more than developed and more than powerful enough in yourself to make those decisions. But this is saying you are moving sort of back to kind of recalibrate, as I say, the spiritual side of things. I think it's a time of exploration. And to allow that you don't have to be the sort of leading light or the boss or the, the teacher in that space to, to learn from others. Because that will, that will kind of bring you up to date with all of that. That will merge the two together. But it's like you've been very, very good in the emperor type of masculine power oriented thing. You, you've, regardless of whatever age you are, you're very well consolidated there. And you are at a point where you can start to to bargain around, you know, what effort you put in. You've, you've done the hard yards, but your spiritual sort of approach has has suffered. It doesn't necessarily mean you weren't, as I say, I, I think you were thinking spiritually, you were acting and, and doing things spiritually, but it's like maybe a lot of it was focused towards manifestation and there's sort of something that's more fundamental and you've realised that now and that you've got to kind of allow for not knowing the way yet and exploring it. So as I say, being in that 20s to 30s sort of phase around spirituality open the door for you so given that let's have a look at how some of this affects others sort of nearby to you people you work with people that you love you know friends so i'm going to use firstly the oracle of the roses with an archetype for you being in this sort of like combined phase of kind of master of your own destiny about most of the material things in life but now really starting to explore what this really means to you spiritually and then other people the archetypes in other people that you might meet in this sort of combined phase so for you the ancestor yeah you're you're very well developed and connected and probably have strong family ties all of those sorts of things there's no doubt about that but it, it just feels like maybe it's an, an ancestral sort of area too that you can really find your spiritual pathway and then the companion somebody will come a teacher will come a mentor will come, a friend will come. It's saying that. It's saying that you're not going to be on your own with this. Let's see a little bit more about this, this person, this companion, or even potentially groups of people as companions that, that will help you with this phase in your life. Language and intuition. Yeah. You are going to, what is going to happen with this in, in whatever form it is, I think you're going to come across companions, helpers or whatever who have spent more time maybe looking at the spiritual and less at the material. I think in the end, you're going to share with each other a different language and a different way of looking at things. You'll be able to teach them about the material, you know, how to survive in that kind of world, how to, how to manifest, all of that sort of stuff. Teach them the language of that, the, almost the spellcraft of that in a way. And they're going to teach you how to kind of align that more with your spirit because there's a kind of intuitive approach to them. They, they, they operate much more in your intuition and less on action. You operate a lot on action. Bringing the two things together, it's going to be a really beautiful melding of the energies. Let's see what else we have. Strength. 
stripes and Aquarius. Yeah, you might be a little bit concerned about these people <laughs> at first. You might think, oh, are they too rebellious? Are they too different? Do they understand what I'm doing? You know, like they may seem a bit left of centre, definitely. And they may think the same about you. They might think like, oh, my goodness, this person is so in the matrix. And I don't think you really are. I just think you're very adept. But they may think that. So there may be a little bit of a standoff at first, but I think it will work through. They're, they're, they're definitely transpersonal. They're definitely looking at that level. And I think if you can talk to them on that level around around what you're doing with the collective and what you've done, and, and then that can align, you can find the language to find the points where it meets in the middle. It'll be very mutually beneficial. So it's ultimately very good, but maybe a little bit sort of disconcerting at first. Okay, so let's have a look then. We also had some cards under this card, along with the other ones that started the reading, which are about on a broader level. So the sort of community energy that you will have, you know, like in whatever that means to you, family, organization, community, the world stage, whatever level you operate on, coming from being in this phase where you are really, as I say, primarily consolidating and balancing your life to have a happier, healthier life, but also kind of exploring spiritual things at the same time. So we have strength of vulnerability. Well, that makes sense. You do have the strength. You can do this. You can go into that phase of learning because you know that you're a success. You're self-actualized. People who are self-actualized are able to be vulnerable. And vows, yeah, and they might be sort of something about love and like we, we had the, the two of water and, and like looking at that. So for some of you, this might be about consolidating and committing to a relationship and to that side of things and that's what triggers some of this and also makes you think about the spiritual side of things and your ancestry and your culture and, and what you would want to imbue into your love life and to your family and that kind of thing. Okay, so let's have a look at some blessings that this will bring you. The being in this phase is bringing you pile three. So we'll get blessings from the Fae. So we have a blessing of rapture. Well, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Doesn't get a lot better than that. Pile three. And a blessing of fairy magic. Okay. And this is the thing. I actually think if you connect your actual manifestation magic, because you have it, and action magic with these other people or this person or this lover, whatever it is, is spiritual side of things. That creates real magic. That creates the sort of capacity on all levels. It gets everything in balance. And then you have the blessing of rapture, that sense of being able to jump into the unknown, that sense of being loved, that sense of being lifted up. So there's a lot to be said for this. You're in a very good phase. It's just don't shut out that secondary thing. Don't turn off the voices about the spirit because when you connect the two together, you're really moving forward. Let's have a look at the pathway that it takes you on. New beginning. Yeah, a new beginning. This is the waxing crescent. This is the, the concept that something new is going to come from this because you have everything balanced so you can go to that next level. That's so why I say I don't think that you will go from this to the, the phase that looks like the 50s or older. I think you will go almost back to the 20s in the sense of, you know, you you have everything you need. You know that you're self-actualized so you can have the – there's a thing called, I think, the mindset of the learner or the mindset of the, the beginner. And they're, they always, they're open to new things and, and evolution and so forth because – they're not threatened by this. They know that they can do it. So to finish off the reading, I want to use the art oracle. So it's a bit like the love oracles and the music oracles that I've used before, if you've seen them in my readings. But even if you haven't, it's just in each deck, it's sort of like a different industry or, or concept around people from history. So in this case, it's people from the art world. I am not an expert on the art world, so it may not. I may pick a card that is someone I don't even know who they are. I'm not that interested really in the person, though if that resonates to you, by all means take it. I'm more interested in what their advice is around what it is to make an art form of this phase for your life. So you've got Salvador Dali. Actually, I know who Salvador Dali is. Now that's really interesting because he looked at that, that kind of like, you know, the magic, the, the, the rapture, the, the sort of like almost the surreal, the kind of taking things beyond, you know, like excellent sort of actual art ability, but then taking it beyond a little bit surreal, a bit a bit different, a little bit new. And I think this marriage of the spiritual with what you can already do in the world could it could be a very good, very good sort of representation of that. His advice is never make an appearance without controversy. So be prepared to go in and do different things and so forth. 
who says, tap the unconscious and pray it isn't boring. Well, I don't think it's going to be boring for you. And I think, as I say, I think you're going to have this learner mindset, beginner mindset, because you're able to do it. You're confident enough to do it. It's sort of like radical curiosity and so forth. And then being Dali is inspiration enough. So being you will be inspiration enough. But you do need to align in the spiritual side for that inspiration to really come through. So Pile 3, I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome Pile 4 to your reading. So you came to the one with 50s or older. So some of you may be in that literal generational group. Otherwise, you're likely to be one of those sort of people who either brought in a lot from another life, so you kind of have that level of wisdom and capacity very early in whatever this is in your life, and, and you're just very, very precocious on that sort of level, or there's some phase in your life that you've concentrated a lot on, and you've kind of got to that point where you've consolidated, done everything that you want, and you want to do something new, which is quite likely with these two cards, actually, the two aces here. So you're one of those things. You you could be very young. You could be, you know, I mean, we've probably all known that kid in the schoolyard that everybody went to when they had a problem because they were just preternaturally emotionally intelligent. You could be someone like that with this sort of thing. You don't, as I say, have to be in that age group. Or you could be like me and be in that age group. And so you're kind of at that point about what do I do next? Do I do I just sort of relax back and and put up my feet? Or do I want to mentor and coach others? Or do I want to go and do something different? And for you guys, you are creatures of transformation and you know you have a lot of confidence because you know that you've been able to deal with problems and solve them and so forth. So as I say, I mean, like if you're one of these precocious kids who was sort of like a genius at sort of mathematics when you were young or something, a kind of um, goodwill hunting type thing you know, from that movie, then you know that you can solve the problem. So you can go and you can do something different. You can transform. You have a lot of confidence. You can also potentially mentor and coach others. But I think for most of you that have come here, you do want to do something new. It's like you've got to that point and now you're ready to start a new exploration almost right back at the 20s. Now, what always happens with this is that you don't, you're not completely like you're back in the 20s. You know, you, you do actually bring all the experience that you've had and that confidence and problem solving ability. But with both the ace of, of fire or wands and the ace of water and cups, there is there is a real sense of wanting to do something new creatively, emotionally and so forth. You're certainly not ready to put your feet up and watch Netflix or even go into semi-retirement. And But I don't think equally that you sort of, if you were, say, a, uh, you know, a vice president of an organization, I don't think you necessarily want to be CEO. I think you might actually want to do something different, start your own organization or something like that. So depending on where you're at, there's, there is a push towards the new and, and individuation. So it could, in fact, one of the things it could very much so is people who've done very well in sort of work, for instance, and want to start their own business, something new. So you're up for the next challenge and you're very, very confident. And and there's a kind of an almost a almost spiritual drive to this. You you need a challenge. You you are not someone who could, as I say, sit happily just sort of watching television. You you want a challenge, you draw that kind of energy to you, that plutonian change energy. You may be an incredible change agent. You might be someone who could be a consultant and do that in organizations because you have the maturity of approach, the confidence, and you can solve the problems. You also want to heal something. Now, some of you, if you if you are literally in this age group, you may have to heal something physically or something, or you may have to be aware that you'd like to sort of start everything new, but there's some limitations that happen physically as you get older. So there may be something like that for some of you. But I think for most, there's sort of you almost have a cause now to take take what you've learnt, you know, in whatever it is that's got you to that point where you you know, consolidated, senior, successful, whatever it is. Uh, and, and individuated, self-actualized to, to do something new. And, and for some, it may be mentoring new people coming through. That's possible. But I think for most, it sort of feels like there's this phase where you're there, you're consolidated, you're ready for the next challenge, you've got everything in your kit bag, but you almost want to start something completely new. So I suspect your secondary phase may be almost like the 20s. But as I say, with that wisdom. But we'll see what happens. We don't want to second guess the tarot. So we're going to ask the tarot firstly about a bit more about the phase that you're in at the moment, then what the secondary phase might be. 
and then we're going to look at how to synthesize them. I'm using the alchemistical tarot because it has a fifth suit, which is about spirit, because I really feel when we're looking at phases of life, that the energy of the spirit and the soul is just as important as the other four elements. So let's see what we get about this phase that you're in, Pile 4, and what aspects of your life that's probably most working. I think for most of you it's probably around career, business, creativity, something like that. So there we've got spirit. A lot of spirit cards have come up. I knew this was going to happen. It is, there is a very spiritual part to the phase of development that you're in. Okay, this is very interesting. The seeker of spirit... So that is like the page of spirit is reversed. There, I think that you are very spiritual, but you're kind of you've almost developed very much in one way, which is about the problem solver and the, and the courage. Maybe the softer side of it, because you've got this Pluto and Black Moon Lilith, the softer side of it that would heal you. That's something you need to think about with the seeker of spirit reversed. It may be that you're you're too comfortable with the shadows. You know, like don't don't let that be the case don't don't feel like you have to be persephone down in hades all the time sometimes you're allowed to be out for spring and summer so there's something like that for you because you're very courageous this is the courage you know you know who you are you know you're strong you know you can deal with change you might have gone through quite a few changes you know in a career you might have had redundancies or be been you know fired at some point or something but you've always bounced back you you have the problem solving you know how to deal with that if that's happened you, you have a lot of courage a lot of courage and a lot of capacity to deal with the the sort of like the powers of the world pluto the devil all of that kind of thing and bring it into some sort of harmony this is the problem solver and so forth so there's definitely that sort of sense that you are you are mature enough to do this. You know what you're dealing with. You're courageous enough to do it. The only thing, though, is because you haven't fully looked at the other side of the spirituality, you know, the heart and the creativity, the thing that you're kind of tilting towards that you want to do now, so you know this, it's a little bit out of balance. You're kind of doing this to be in the battle rather than, you know, in what it would have been to, to fully heal yourself and then potentially heal others. So let's see. Let's see what the secondary phase is because this could either be the thing that's got you to this level and it's, it's residual or it could be something that you want to move to. So let's see what Tarot has to say about that. Okay, the thing that I think is interesting is that I do think that part of your problem solving and all of this sort of stuff and dealing with this and coming into the spiritual balance will be to to almost go back to first principles and, you know, almost like a 20s beginner mindset, you know, learner mindset sort of thing to, to do something new, having the confidence and the self-actualization to do it. But I think that the, the secondary phase that you're in is, is the one that has, lead, has led you to this and there's some residual stuff there. Because the fact that we've got two travellers cards, because that's like knights, and to me knights feel like about the 30s or 30s to 40s. So I feel like there's, there's a sense there of still some stuff around the emotional and spiritual journey that you were on that you haven't fully, fully sort of explored and, and it was because you felt at the time it was going to sap your strength and your conviction. So you kind of like put that off to the side. Like, yeah, one day I'll meditate. One day I'll get into my heart right now. I've got problems to solve and worlds to conquer and powers to deal with. So I feel like there is a secondary. The niggling of, of this is, is sort of, as I say, you know, maybe late 30s to 40s sort of generational sort of stuff where you've done some of this work, but you didn't prioritize it. And so it's, it's that sort of level. It's like, what, what did you miss? What did you not pay attention to while you were busy problem solving in that phase? And now you're sort of at this position, as I say, of self-actualization. You're ready to go back and start again. But there's, it's, I think spirit wants you to understand what happened at that level, to not completely let go of it. Because when you start again, you'll move more rapidly to this if you understand this bit. If you keep kind of missing this bit, that you go from from the initial issue to the problem solving, then there's something in the development path that you'll miss, if that makes sense. So let's see what Spirit wants to say about synthesizing these, integrating that phase of exploration and consolidation, particularly spiritually and emotionally.
Okay. Spirit definitely says a lot of it is about opening up to the spirit side of things. You are very much about strategy. So it's interesting. We've got Traveller of Earth, so the Knight of Earth. And this card talks about it as strategy and work. And a lot of this is about work. I do think most of you, this is about you know, in your workplace, the power of the, in the place of a power of the world and all that kind of thing. So you're very strategic. You don't have to worry about that. You, you're all over that. So less of that and, and maybe understanding you're not yet sort of with the spiritual thing at that point of pure clarity. You need to sort of go back a step particularly spiritually and emotionally to work out what was it you kind of skipped over you kind of skipped over it it was kind of almost like you know when if, if you'd had a sort of series of workshops you could have gone to and one of them was about aligning your spirit and your heart to what you did you were like oh that's the one i can do without i'm fine with that i'm going to go off and do the one about sun Tzu strategy or something so there, there is something about not not sort of overemphasizing how far you went with that understanding there's still some work to do and being prepared to to assimilate that not just sort of bypass it and i think it's partly because you do have this sort of plutonian thing so you've been able to go to the depths and you, i think in uh, spiritual terms you've been quite a spiritual warrior it's just that you haven't healed yourself you've kind of glossed over that you've thought the cause was bigger than you or something so i think spirit here wants you to to think of that to not because it's going to be important to understand that you don't necessarily have to go back into that it's just understanding it because if you are then going to the new which is what i think you're going to do next you need it will make the the journey better and more fulfilling for you in whatever it is that you're trying to to kick off and start and so forth so let's get a little bit more information. Let's start firstly with how this phase impacts others around you. And so what I'm going to start with first is the Oracle of the Roses. And I'm going to do a card for an archetype that represents you in the phase. And then also an, a card to represent the sort of archetypes you're going to come across because you're in this phase. So, so for you, the Explorer. Oh, this, is, this is Spirit wanting you to do this, I would say. And what you'll come across, the warrior. Uh, that's really interesting because I almost think that's a reversal of what you've been. I think you've been the warrior for a long time. And I think what Spirit is trying to say is that the next step for you, both going to the sort of like the, the sort of beginner mindset, the sort of learner mindset, and also integrating this stuff that you've almost kind of put in the the, the back shelf because it, it you almost feel like it's self-indulgent it's like to do that and to to find others who can take up the fight it's time for you to to explore do something new and to integrate your sort of spirit and your heart with what you do you're meant to be in that phase now you're you've done enough for this problem solving and building the world and so forth so we also want to have a look at some personality characteristics of people that you will come across as a result of being in this phase. So we already know you're going to come across other fighters. That's not that's not a problem. There will be people who can take up the baton. Let's see what else we get. Concentrativeness, focus, and marvelousness. Okay, you're going to get people who are just like you, who are very focused, problem solvers. Just get to the point, move very fast, think very fast, and you're also going to get deeply spiritual people. And I think that spirit wants you to look at both, wants you to look at both and maybe to put your focus, see if you can like marry that kind of focus and concentration to the spiritual side of things so that life becomes marvelous. It's not just clever and strategic and, and you know, your Machiavelli in, in the court, you know, of the Medici's or whatever, you know, it, it's, it's something more, it's something spiritual for you. So let's also have a look at some other other personality aspects that you are likely to be coming across in this phase water and stripes okay so some of them are going to be warriors like you you're going to find people like you and that may be what you need to actually have that mirror held up to you so that you can see look actually um it's not always just a fight it's funny i think you'd actually say to them it's not always just a fight and that that gets you back in touch with what it is that you kind of glossed over but is there waiting to be brought out in you there's also very strong sort of emotional stuff who will understand the depths that you can go to they'll see that these people will understand what you've been through how you've become what you have but i just think that there's some that will will have done it through a different route they'll have done it through this sort of developing the the heart and the spirit while you've kind of dealt with the powers of the world put together it's a very formidable match i have to say and putting it together there were two cards that were also under the 40s along with the original cards from the spread 
that are meant to sort of show what this looks like, the sort of energies around this phase for you on a community or a broader scale level. So we have responding, not reacting, and peacemaking. So it's not war anymore, it's peace. And and sometimes, you know, like sometimes when you deal with, with the powers of the world all the time, you end up reacting all the time and thinking it's always a war. I think you're going to show that to somebody else and in showing it you'll realise yourself that the most strategic thing you can do is a peacemaker and that's connecting with the heart and with the spirit. So this is all about moving from, you know, as I say, almost a Sun Tzu art of war strategist to a peacemaker. And you have the development, you have the ability, the problem solving to do it. And you do have this other phase. You've just not paid as much attention to it. So let's see what blessings you can get from, from I think, synthesizing these two phases. Because there's a risk if you don't synthesize them that you stay just in the problem solving space. And I don't think you'll get as much out of it if that's the case. So let's ask the blessings when you synthesize these two phases. So we get... The gift of sharing, yeah, sharing the load, sharing your heart, all of those sort of things, like the softer skills. And a blessing to undo an unfortunate grief, which is an unfortunate, uh, unfortunate sort of fate, as I understand it. Fatal pattern, I guess they're, they're kind of the same thing. Character is destiny, that kind of thing. So you can you can recalibrate. This is what it's saying. Sharing, opening your heart, opening your spirit a bit more. You can actually break that pattern and, and integrate these. And it, that in itself will be a blessing. So if you felt like you were on your own fighting these battles, you won't be on your own at the end of this. Let's see what pathway you can follow with the, the dominant phase integrated with, I think, the preceding phase that is still there, knocking on the door of your consciousness. Compassion. Yeah. This is the thing. And I think you are compassionate, but I think that you've got so caught up in being in the belly of the beast that you could have lost that to some degree. As I say, it's like, oh, I can't deal with that. You know, that's not going to win the battle. That's not going to solve the problem. But in fact, in the longer term, it's going to do it even more. And that compassion is going to be healing for you and for others with Chiron. So to finish off, I'm going to use a card from the Art Oracle. So there's various decks I have, you know, the Music Oracles, the Art Oracles, the Love Oracles and so forth. This one is from Artists in History. I'm not an art historian, so we may get a card of someone I haven't heard of. But regardless, I'm not that interested really in who the person is as such. I'm more interested in the advice they give because this is like how to make an artwork of this phase for you. So you've got Paul Gauguin. I know a little bit about him, but not a lot. I mean, he, I think, did a lot of sort of very earthy, sensual sort of art and so forth, but I'm not, I'm not an expert on him. But, but I mean, probably it was connecting great skill and so forth with the sensual and the, the heart. That would make sense. His advice is go far to go far. Yeah, so, I mean, you already have. You're already there, at whatever age you're at. But you know what? If you go a little bit further with those travellers, then you go even further, basically. He says, exaggerate the subtle, share the unseen. So, yeah, because this is the, that, that phase that you've almost glossed over is the subtle. It's the subtle underpinning of all of this. So you need to bring that to the surface. And lastly, only an outsider sees inward. So you've been such an insider. This is the thing. You've been such an insider in, in the, the powers of the world, in whatever that means for you the organisation you're in, family dynamics that you're in, relationships you're in, whatever it is, that that these other sort of energies, I think, that are going to come in and get you reconnected with your heart and your spirit, that's really going to help you see inward, to get even more to the depths and understand it more, but with more gentleness and break the patterns. So I think that you've just been very, very talented at, at dealing with the powers of the world at whatever age you are to the point that you are you know, really established with that. And that, that calling right at the beginning with those two aces, you know it. You know you want to get back to your creative and emotional center. And the way to do it is to think about what did you shelve spiritually and emotionally in particular as you developed this degree of self-actualization. That's all you need to do because you've already done it. And when you take all of that back to the beginning for whatever it is that you want to start new, you're going to get from A to Z a lot faster. 
So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 4. I hope it was helpful and I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.